Okay, back working on the Model A and uh, got my little helper here. Let's see if we can get her in the shot. Um, this is Daisy. She's gonna be helping me today. Actually, we're gonna be working on uh, carburetors and surprise, surprise getting closer to final assembly and I'm, I'm still waiting on some back order parts. So it's getting more difficult uh, to wait on it. And I, I figured I'd go through all the parts that you, if you're gonna do a complete rebuild, what you're gonna have to order. So um, today we're just gonna go over the parts and I'll show you what I had to special order that doesn't come in the carburetor rebuild kits. And, um, and I'll, I'll show you, you know, what they are and where they go. And, uh, let me, uh, switch it around. Daisy, you gonna help me or are you gonna just play today? You gonna work on the car over here? Yeah, I know we need to work on that engine. Okay. Hey there, puppy. Uh, so let's get to the carburetors. I got my Zenith one here. It's all painted up, cleaned up, painted up. Uh, the holly. I'm still gonna have to do some work on the holly because of uh, some of the threads have been stripped out. So I'm gonna have to do helicoil or put put some replacement threads on a couple of different parts on the holly that I still need to order. Um, but let's go through the, uh, the the parts list. So the jets come in the carburetor kit, but some of these other parts and. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you which ones. So like the first one, idle mixture screw, which I can show you right here. It goes right here on the carburetors. And I'm seeing this one right there. Um, be careful with these. If you've got an old carburetor, sometimes people will have swapped them out and they will be the wrong length. And when you try to screw it in, the uh, or the spring is wrong, and it won't allow it to go all the way in. You know, you could kind of test that by, uh, if it's all, if you crank it all the way in and the spring is bottomed out, take the spring off and then turn it in and uh, turn the mixture all the way in to see uh, how, how far it goes in. So just be careful on that. Uh, second thing, throttle stop screw, which this is the throttle lever here. And the stop screw goes just into that right there. So on back order. So um, I have the screw, but I don't have the uh, throttle shaft. So here's the idle jet, which is when you get the kit, you get the cap jet and main jet. The main jet and the idle jet actually have the same thread, but the idle jet is the shorter one. You can see over here that the uh, the main jet is very long. Yeah, when you compare them, you put it side by side. The main jet is very long. It has to go up into the Venturi. So idle jet goes right this is where the main bolt bolts it together, and this is where idle jet goes right there. Um, let's see what's the next throttle plate. Let's see on the throttle plate here. Let me not lose the screws. Throttle plate is very thick, so you can see on that throttle shaft how thick it is. It's actually smaller than the choke plate. You can see the choke plate and it's side by side. It's quite a bit smaller. So throttle plate, these little screws, butterfly set of screws. The screws are the same on this shaft or on the choke shaft. So it's the same screws. Like I said, throttle shaft. This one's slightly worn here and slightly worn right there. So I went ahead and ordered another throttle shaft to see how much, how much space it'll have um in the bushings in here so to to see if i don't think it's worth reaming this out and putting new bushings in i think if i just get a uh, a new throttle shaft it'll give me the the little bit that i need 
So that's a uh, float valve and uh, gasket. You can get another set of gaskets that are different thicknesses so that when you're adjusting your float, you're not bending the arms or you know, messing with the float. You just put different thicknesses in so that as you put the more, more gaskets would be, um, that would be lowering, is it be lowering the fuel level? Anyways, you can get another set of gaskets and you can swap the gaskets out to uh, adjust it. You know, your float pin comes in the gasket, I mean, the car rebuild kit, but the floats don't. So they expect you to reuse your old float or this was about 35, 40 bucks for a new float. I didn't have floats, so I had to buy a, a float. I couldn't reuse my old ones. So uh, then uh, the fuel strainer also back ordered. So in the rebuild kit, they, they give you a gasket for it, but not the, the, uh, the strainer itself. So I had to order one of those and they're on back order. And you'll probably recognize carb to intake. There's the gasket and the, uh, you know, which goes right here and carb top and bottom gasket which goes right there like that so that's the uh all the parts that go into the top part of the gasket set okay now we're going to go over the, the bottom the parts that fit into the bottom of the zenus so first thing is the uh gav valve seat i want to talk about that because they're hard to tell which is which the uh, compensator jet looks a lot like it, but it's a little bit larger threads, if you can see that. And when you look at it, inside here, you can see, uh, if I could get it focused right there, see how it's tapered, where this needle will fit into that taper and uh, but the thing about these is the, uh, the newer, later model Zeniths, it's built into the casting. So if you look down in there at the bottom, it's not threaded. Um, let's see if I can get a... down in there it's made into the casting so that you don't use this valve seat on a uh, on some of the Zenus you won't be using that the Holly that I have it is a uh, early model Holly's the earlier the carburetor it's actually threaded down in there and I had to remove the one that was stuck in there and that was a chore um, jets are rolling around. Okay, the next one is the compensator jet. Looks a lot like that one, but it's it's a little bit longer, and the face of it is made different. And see, it, it's not um, tapered, and on the back side, it's just a, a hollow. That one actually goes in the bowl here. You can see that threaded right there. On the left is the JV access. On the right is the main jet access. But this is the compensator jet, which feeds the fuel well, secondary fuel well, which feeds the idle circuit. And it also feeds the cap jet. So, you know, these would be likely to get plugged because it sits in the bottom of the bowl there and any stuff sloshing around in the bottom of the bowl here could plug that jet so um cap jet so the cap jet you can see is a long jet and right there the cap jet goes in there and you can see it sticks to quite a ways above the carburetor and up into the venturi. So it's the, the longest of the jets. 
And then the next one is the main jet, which goes on the through the bottom here. You got right here, you got the bolt coming through right here, and you got the main jet that comes right through there. See the hole? And it takes a gasket, and then once you get it in, you put the, uh, the plug below it. So then the plug goes right there. And let's see, next one, that's the bottom plug. Secondary fuel well, okay. I was actually thinking this was gonna be pretty expensive, but they're not, they're about five bucks. But you, uh, if you look closely at it, you can see right there, you can see the, uh, there's two little holes in the bottom of this, then the rest of it is just hollow down into there. So you take the, the fuel well and it actually screws in right here next to where the bolt goes through. And this is a vent hole. You can see when you're looking at this side of it, that's the vent hole right there. And then uh, bolt hole is in the center and then the fuel well. The, the vent hole is where when the gas is filling up in the bowl, that air has to go somewhere, so it vents it out, that hole. But that's the uh, fuel well, and when the fuel well's in, let's go back over here to the idle jet. The idle jet actually will fit down in there, and that's how it draws the fuel up into the idle circuit. And the uh, idle, the, this idle jet, since it's screwing up, it doesn't use a, a gasket. It has a tapered shoulder there. You can see the tapered shoulder. Let me put that back out before I lose it. Um, choke shaft. Well, sort of obvious. Choke shaft goes across. Um, yeah, I was able to order the choke shaft. The uh, throttle shafts are on back order. Um, choke shaft. Choke plate is a thinner plate than the uh, the throttle plate, and it's much larger. Let's see, and this one's actually made out of uh, just steel. The choke lever and block washer and nut. Um, this is the bolt that bolts the whole thing together, and then the uh, the venturi. And uh, these actually aren't, I, th I was thinking they would be pretty expensive too, but they actually weren't that bad. So the final piece is this Venturi. And you can see that it fits, has a shoulder on it, and it fits right there. And then I think I'll put it in separate. It fits a little snugger in the top here. And just like that. And. fits together like that. And one of the things that when you're trying to get it apart that you should do is instead of trying to pry it apart when uh, you're, you're, take, you're opening your carburetor up, you just bump that bolt and you can see when you bump in the bolt, it's separating the two. Actually, I got the lock washer on there, so it's. But you bump that bolt, and it'll allow it to slide apart, and eventually, you know, if it's really stuck, you might want to get a, a longer bolt so that you can, you know, really separate them. Should just come apart, but. Um, like, you know, if you saw the earlier video, I really had to fight what was left of the Venturi and these to get them out. So the parts that I had a special order on this were the, uh, let's see. Um, idle set stop screw. That didn't come in the kit. Um, Throttle shaft and choke shaft and screws 
those didn't come in the kit. Throttle plate, choke plate does, doesn't come in the kit. Float, float valve does and the float pin does, but not the, the float itself. Um, let's see over here on the bottom half. The, the, let's see. I think I, the, the needle for the GAV came, but not the housing. So you have to order this, the special housing. Um, secondary fuel well, I, I know I had to order that. And uh, when I, it was so stuck in there, I had to, it chewed it up to get it out. Um, but like I said in another video, checking the, the, the play in the, the shafts to see how much play you have. Choke shaft's not as critical as your throttle shaft. And of course, right now the throttle shaft's on back order. Um, I had a special order that plate, choke plate had a special order it, lever, nut and washer. And um, I, I was even missing the bolt that holds it together. So I had to order that with the lock washer and uh, the Venturi's. You know, if yours is in good shape, like you can see this one, it's tapered on this end. The rest of it's pretty just, just a, a smooth cylinder. So, but um, you wanna make sure that it hasn't been damaged and uh, that you can actually remove it and not chew it up. Like, but um, it seems like it was $5. So if, if you're when in doubt, it, it'd be, but you have to special order it. I mean, uh, you have to order that separate from the gasket kit. So when you get the gasket kit, like this one here, just comes with the jets, the main gasket, float valve, idle set, idle mixture screw and, and, and uh, spring, which you know it has quite a bit of stuff in there. But then once it arrives and you see what it, it does, didn't have and take your carburetor apart, then you, you'll probably have to go back to ordering other parts. And like I said, I'm still waiting on the, uh, what is it, uh, the strainer and the throttle shaft. So those are still on back order. A few other things that you might want to order. This is just a fuel, to set the fuel level. You screw it into the, the drain plug on the bottom. It's just a little hose and you, you bend the hose. Uh, this. Screw it in the drain plug, you bend the clear hose and you can see where the fuel is. And you know, you could set it up to do it off the car or on the car. Um, the uh, choke driver. So you, you may actually have to uh, depending on if you have one and what shape it's in, and then the choke rod sleeve, and there's a, a, a spring on the choke rod also that if you're missing any of those parts, you may have to, to order those also. Um, I think that's about it for going over the parts in the order list. Like I said, I'm still waiting on the throttle shaft and the strainer, but the rest of it, I think I'm gonna move ahead and do an assembly and uh, and just finish it out later. One other side note about uh, Model A carburetors is that you can see you know, all the parts I was able to get for the Zenith. Um, you can get quite a few bits and pieces to the Tillotson Model X which is, uh, this is a uh, jet and gasket set for the Model X. And uh, the, uh, you can also buy a float for it too. The, uh, if you go with the, the Marvel Schiebler, they're harder to find parts for. And I was able to find a gasket set for it, but some of the other parts and like the, the, uh, the float on it would be, is, is even more difficult to locate. And then back to the Tillotsons, the Model X you can get parts for. The Model F1B, you can't find parts for those. They're even more difficult. And um, the, you know, there's some specialty carburetor places that you know, I may be able to get them, get some more parts from them, like you know, floats. And uh, you know, I could always make 
do with you know, make some gaskets from the gasket material, but some stuff like the jets and the floats, um, like you know this Marvel kit has gaskets in it, but it doesn't have any of the uh, the jets. So that was just a side note for the aftermarket crowd. Okay, gonna try to do the final assembly test fit of the uh, Zenith carburetors. Um, Holly, I still need to do fix some threads on it, so we'll, we'll work on the Zenith one. So let's start on the top first, and uh, the idle mixture screw. You can see the idle mixture screw and the spring, and it goes right in here. And I checked the threads on most of these things, so the uh, the threads should be correct and clean. One thing uh, I was mentioning earlier is that if for some reason the uh, you get a carburetor and the idle mixture doesn't seem to be doing anything they may have swapped out the idle mixture screw from another carburetor and what you can do is if you test it to where when you you screw it in there and if it's seating on the uh the spring is collapsing and stopping it then it may be the wrong length idle mixture screw so you, you want to check that to make sure yeah, without the spring, how far in it goes, and that the, the spring is not collapsing and stopping it from going any further. Um, set stop screw. Now uh, that is actually on this shaft plate. I'm gonna just stick it in here. I'm just gonna use the. Uh, older one my original throttle shaft and I'm going to start you know this old throttle shaft is, is pretty corroded although it's backwards so I may end up having to just use what I got so uh, next would be I'm going to keep working on the throttle plate here so getting the uh the plate started uh, you'll notice when you're doing the plate it has the sides of it The sides of the plate have, it's like flattened out a little bit right here and a little bit right there, so that it'll go down into the throat. So you have to have it in there correctly to get it into the throat. And then There we 
go. Got them both in there, and it holds the uh, throttle shaft in place. Um, so next idle shaft. Turned upside down. No gasket, and it just threads in right here. And I'm just I'm gonna finger tight most of this, and then I'll go back and cinch it down. You know, and you don't have to really crank on these. They uh, they're not gonna go anywhere. So float valve plus gasket, and I'm just going to go with the default gasket for right now. We'll see how it turns out later. And then the float and What you can see is on this side, it actually holds the pin in. See how it's, it's made. And uh, I had to tap it in there and it holds the pin from going, from falling out. And uh, what you can look at is this surface here, the plane of the carburetor and the plane of the float should be parallel. And it's it's pretty parallel so that one is probably in good shape um the other thing would be the fuel strainer which would go right here which back ordered so um and then the uh intake gasket so that that one's so let's work on the uh the bottom now okay so for the bottom um, like I said, on the Zenith one, um, when you look down in here in the GAV, this is a later model uh, design. And when you look down in there, well, I could see that in the casting, it's been drilled and tapered for the GAV. So I'm not actually gonna use the valve seat which is the, the smallest of the, the jets. I'm not gonna use it on this carburetor. The Holly, I would have to use it on it. So let's go to the compensator jet, which looks a lot like the valve seat, but this one a little bit larger. And, uh, and you have a gasket on it, and it's going to go in the bowl, the bowl here. Let's see if I can get it started. Like I said, all of these, you know, you just snug down the gasket. It doesn't have to be cranked down super tight. Also, do we get the, the you know the full width flat tip screwdriver when you're when you're tightening it so that you're not going to strip the brass so the next one we're going to do is the cap jet which is the longest jet in the gasket so that you've got the long jet and it's going to go down here in the carburetor you can see the the bottom one right here See. So, screw this one in from the top, 
and this will actually go up into the venturi so i'm just going to snug it down for right now and be careful once you get that in there that you don't break it off so when you, if you flip it over which, take the back out the uh, the main jet comes in from the bottom sets in there screwdriver tight and it has a gasket on it also and like i said i'm going to come back and tighten these later um, and put, I'm going to just go ahead and put the, the uh, plug back on it. Okay, um, secondary fuel well. So that goes up here on the top. And it actually goes in with the threads at the top. You might think it goes the other way, but it actually goes where that drops down in there. And I, I showed this earlier. There's tiny little ports on each side of it. If you're re reusing your old one, make sure those are opened up and not wallowed out either. It's, it's a tiny port and that the, the center of it is cleaned out. And, you know, these are only, especially if you're having problems with your idle circuit, I think it was three or $4, but you have to order it separate from the uh, gasket set. So... Well, it just doesn't want to go in. I'm going to have to clean the threads on that one again. Okay, I finally got that uh, secondary well in there. What I had to do was uh, chase the threads again and uh, secondary well in there and spun it around to clean up. There was just rust and corrosion down in there and it wouldn't go down far enough. When you drop it in there, it should go below the level of the bowl. So it's basically even with the level right here and then you, you thread it down in. Um, as you saw, it, it wasn't going in far enough so I had to clean it up a little bit. The choke lever and the choke plate. So let me take the screws off here. And I'm just sticking the choke shaft in. This has to come out this side. The threads have to come on this side. And You, you can also see that this is um, not quite round. It's a little bit more of an oval. Okay, I've got one 
inside. This other side's in there. I'm holding the choke plate with my finger so it doesn't flop around. Maybe. There we go. I left the first screw a little loose until I got the second lined up. Check functionality. Then this is the lever that uh, has a little dimple on that side here for uh, the choke driver. What I do with the choke driver. So this is the uh, choke driver and it has a little groove here that fits this lever and uh, oh, I didn't put the uh, GAV in. First you, you tighten that down and then you put the needle in. So you don't want to be crushing the needle in there. But um, choke driver out. So the choke driver. There we go. And then you put this on. It fits in that groove right there. Tiny nut. Oh. You pull your choke lever, closes that up, turn the uh, GAV, oh, it's just a stiff one right now. And then the big bolt. So like I said earlier, throttle shafts on back order, which I just reused the old one. Um, gasket for up top here. And uh, this one, the GAV seat, I didn't need to use it on the, uh, the Zenith one because it's made into the carburetor. And uh, so I was waiting on the throttle shaft. Oh, and the fuel strainer at this end. They had the washer, but don't have the strainer. So there she is. And uh, I'm still, I still got to work on the, the Holly. It has some strip threads that I got to work on. And uh, I have to work on that for a little bit, but you know, that's, it's basically the same, same design. So the only difference with it is it has the GAV valve seat at the bottom of the GAV. And uh, I have to screw that in. But other than that, it's almost identical as the Zenith one. So, uh, next step would be to, uh, you know, once I get the, the throttle shaft in and the fuel strainer in, 
then uh, then I could hook up the fuel levels, the fuel level gauge kit here is either you do it set it up set up a little space on your your uh, workbench or you do it on the car but you take this little adapter and you take the plug out of the bottom where the main jet goes and you plug this in then on the hose here fuel level so when it goes in it'll find its own level actually stick a piece of wire in there to make the hose stay bent there we go and If you have it on the car, you just shut the valve off, take the drain plug out and screw that in and bring this up alongside here. And bend this. There. So that turn the valve, the fuel valve back on as the bowl fills the fuel will fill this up and you'll be able to see and measure five eighths from the top of the bottom bowl so pretty simple measuring the uh where the the float is stopping and then if you want to adjust it you'd have to take it back apart and either subtract put a thinner gasket in or add thicker gaskets on that float valve but that's pretty much it uh, just to test your uh, fuel level you know you, you could set this up on a, a workbench but if you're only going to do it once you know you might as well just hook, hook it up on the car and uh, check it there but that's pretty simple Well, just a quick update at the end here. I went to uh, snug up the uh, idle jet. I uh, just had my little screwdriver here, not even a, a wrench, snapped it right off. So, cheap little uh, idle jet. And uh, what I was able to do is use the uh, reverse drill, and it was still you know, finger tight, so I just backed it out. But be careful on these, you know, like I say, you just need to snug them up and there you go. You know, anybody want a deal on a brand new idle jet? You know, it wasn't so, so hard to complain to the manufacturer, I would do that. But anyways, so just be careful when you're tightening these things. Okay, that's about it on the uh, Zenith design, Zenith Holly carburetors. Got one of them built. I ended up taking the idle jet out of the second kit and putting it in this one since that one snapped off on me. And uh, so I have one complete carburetor. Still waiting on that throttle shaft. You know, this one's not unbearable. You know, it would work. And, but mostly the fuel strainer. You know, I can put a plug in the end of it for testing purposes. But, um, you know, so there's the, uh, the list of the, the parts and pieces that go into the, the rebuild. And uh, like I said, on the holly here, you know, when you're checking your carburetors, the uh, cap jet on this one, somebody had stripped it out and I'm gonna have to do a helicoil you know thread repair kit on it and I'm not sure I may try to 
just see how it does with the, the threads that it has and uh, on the fuel in, inlet here. I may have to drill it out and put thread repair on it too. It, you know, they're not very good, but there's still some threads left. So this one, I still need to do some additional work on it. And, um, and like I said, this one has the, the GAV down at the bottom there that I'm gonna have to carefully see if I can clean the threads on it and screw a new one in. You know, I, I had to fight that one to get it out of the holly. And uh, the, the newer carburetors, they got away from that anyway. So these, you don't have that problem. But I, uh, I went ahead and uh, tightened up everything else, snugged it down, and now it's time to, uh, to test the, uh, the float on it first. I think that's what I'll, I'll do with it. And, uh, and then put it on my car, put it on the engine, and soon, and actually my dad's having problems with his carburetor on his truck. He's running a Tillotson and he's rebuilt it, but still, I think it's the Tillotson carburetor that's, you know, maybe has some plug passages or something. But um, yeah, I think of what the next step on it, I went up there a couple weekends ago and, uh, you know, we were just having backfiring and lots of problems. And we got it running, but not very good. And, uh, try swapping carburetors he, he could swap the, the one on he's got a zenith on his 28 coupe and we know that's a good running one and then i might take this and try to test run it on the 28 coupe because I, we know the ignition everything else is working fine on it and uh and not introduce new problems um so that's about it on the carburetors just a side note when i was looking at this the early ones of these uh, choke levers only came to here, and this part's cut off. And then they figured out when you're hand cranking it, you want to have, put a wire through here and go up towards the radiator so you can just pull the choke, crank it, and then you know push the choke back in. So later model, early models don't have this part of the lever, but late, all, all the later ones, and these are very rare, rare the early ones. Uh, the only ones I've seen, somebody's actually just cut this off. And uh, it's not really needed for most people that are using electric starters because they're, they don't put a wire on it and going up to the radiator, you rarely see anybody actually that has that set up. But uh, as just interesting side note, well, I put that new one on there that it has that on there. But anyways, I think that's it for the Zenith carburetors. I may do another video on actually checking the fuel level on the car and setting the float level. And then I have rebuild kit for a Tillotson X. And I have, I think I actually have one or two Tillotson X. And I have a gasket set for the Marvel. And I think I actually have two Marvels, but I'll have to see if what the jets on it look like and if I can reuse the old jets, clean them up and maybe locate parts and pieces for the, the Marvel. Um, stuff like jets and floats on the Marvel are very hard to find. And the, the har probably the hardest one is the Tillotson F1Bs. They look similar to this, but they're aluminum and those are very difficult to find gasket sets or anything for them. So, you know, if you have one of those, you know, you're kind of out of luck and uh, you might have to find a used F1B and take parts and make, make a good one out of it. Anyways, all right, everybody, thanks for watching and click the subscribe button. It's free and it just helps, you know, those of us creating content, it keeps track of how many, uh, people are actually subscribing to the channel and uh, popularity of the channel. And then uh, click the like button, put a comment down and uh, say whether you enjoy watching this or you learned something or was informative or just to say hi. 
I had a few comments from uh, people from uh, Australia that was interesting that that actually made my day and uh, Wayne's garage down there in Australia on the east coast of Australia um, so anyways all right everybody take care